Welcome to the show that takes you behind the scenes at the last family-owned and run theme park and zoo in the UK, Flamingo Land in North Yorkshire. We'll be following all the ups and downs and thrills and spells of the countdown to the opening of the park for the 2006 season. And stay tuned for the chance to win a family break in Teesdale in our competition. The park's new attraction for 2006 is a roller coaster costing £6 million. The boss's wife, Victoria Gibb, who also works at the park and is expecting her first baby in less than a month, hasn't gone on maternity leave yet. This is the, uh, the site of our newest and most beautiful roller coaster to date. It's our new project for the 2006 season. It's a suspended looping coaster um, from Vicoma in Holland. And um, what makes it different is on a suspended coaster, you hang underneath the track, uh, which is a totally different ride experience. It's actually a very, very exciting ride experience. This is one of my personal favorite rides, and I'm thrilled that we've bought, we've bought one. And it's got lots of new features, like a boomerang, which will be over in the distance over there. And this is the highest point. So the coaster comes in. It's just a standard pull-up coaster. It's not a launch mechanism coaster like our, the coaster we put in last year. And shoots you off on a, on a fantastic journey, which goes way over in that direction and uh, swoops down over our railway track and basically is a fabulous new ride. It's, uh, it's named after our male lion, who's the head of our pride, Kumali. And it's uh, an African theme. So when it's finished, you'll see lots of African detailing. There'll be lots of thatched roofs and sort of carved African icons. And over there, near that big yellow crane, we'll have a big um, cave entrance to the ride, which is the sort of the themed magical entrance that you walk through. And uh, it'll look completely different come the spring and opening for the Easter season. Over in the zoo, the lines have been confined to indoor quarters for some days, while workmen carry out repairs to a section of the water ride, which passes through their outdoor What's enclosure. This? What's this, eh? My name's Dennis uh, Piercy, and uh, I look after big cats. We've got mother, two cubs, and an unrelated male. Um, and we're hoping to break from them shortly. We brought them in from Longleat just over a year ago. Good girls, Azzy. All into a new enclosure, so we just got settled in nicely. The lions have been inside now uh, for about 10 days. They're just repairing the water ride, filling the ride up with water and testing it. And then after the water ride's all sorted, we can let them out and they'll be out all summer. We've got a very good relationship. We try to work with them as much as possible. We play with them with a brush, and um, so if we've got any problems, we bring a vet in to have a look at them. There's no stress, it's all stress-free. We do a little bit of training with them before we feed them. Come on, girls. Come on. Come on, babies. This is a scented stick, and we get them to touch that with the nose, and then we put a little piece of meat on here, and we feed them for being good. If they don't do it, we don't feed them at that time. But they all get fed later on in the day. Look what we've got for you. Come on. Up. We can put them up in the air. Just have a look, check the pads, the feet. Good girl. See if there's any lumps and bumps, any scratches. Check the claws. Have a look in their mouth. Check the teeth. And it's just a quick visual check. Later, with the water ride fixed, Kumali gets a chance to do a bit of visual checking himself of the new roller coaster named after him. Kamali is um, just over three years old. He's a bit immature yet. He's just like a teenager. He's a bit silly. Once he gets another year on him, we should be able to breed through uh, all three cats and um, we'll be unrelated for a while. They're the only notes at the minute, then. Who's these? They're the ones that's going to sing and dance. It's audition time, and in less than three months, some of these performers will be taking centre stage in Flamingoland shows, including the Professor Bubbles children's show. <laughs> All right, then, 
everybody up. This is Circle of Life. I'll do it with you, then we're going to go and book groups of four, right? My name is Hayley Richardson. I'm a choreographer, and I've been hired by Flamingoland to put together three evening production shows and concentrate mainly on the daytime show, which is Professor Bubbles. Full turn, turn, step across, kick. Drag turn. This is my first big production show that I'm going to be putting together. Really looking forward to it. I've worked at Flamingoland before, um, but as a dancer, and um, this is the first time I've been given an opportunity to, to put together my own shows. Preparation! Today we are holding auditions um, for the dancers and the production singers and tomorrow the same. We have about 80 people coming each day. Well done, next group! It takes a certain type of someone to work at Flamingoland, I think. They have to have a certain type of personality um, young and enthusiastic is, is mainly what I'm looking for. Obviously a strong dancer, a good singer. Thanks. I like her a lot. I just hope she can sing. One part of Flamingo Land not on show to the public is the staff accommodation. This flat is known to its residents as the penthouse. This season it's home to Hungarian economics graduate Gabor Kellerman. Um, this is my third season in Flamingoland. After I graduated, I came back and last summer again to work in here as a catering supervisor. I've been promoted in the last season because first time when I, when I came in here, I was a catering assistant. Welcome back. How are you? I'm brilliant. How are you? Good. Very well. Personnel manager Nikki Riddell is responsible for the welfare of the park's 300 staff. Yeah, just in time for coffee. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Historically, we had an ongoing problem with lack of staff, particularly working on catering, and it was a gap that we needed to fill and we had a, a problem that we needed to solve. And when the EU opened up in 2004, we were inundated with requests from, from youngsters who were hospitality experts wanting to come to the UK for the summer initially just to improve their, their language skills and work in a, a completely different environment but something that they were familiar with. Hence, the majority of the staff that we have at the moment work on the catering. They're all so happy to be here and given the opportunity to work in the UK that I think it's, it's so far been a win-win situation for everybody. Has Darren spoken to you about what you're going to be doing this year? Did you mention that before you left last year, that the extra yeah. responsibilities this year? Yeah, you know, I was supervisor of Jolly Sarah uh -huh. Restaurant yeah. last year. I will be supervisor of Jolly Sarah, plus mm -hmm. uh, I have to look after the old fish and chip shop, what can be found in the park. It's a good experience for me, a challenge. I want to improve my language skills, that's the most important. I want to speak as good as I can. It will be hearing in the Jolly in this season, so loads of work to do. The first season, 2004, we, we took a gamble because obviously we didn't know if it was going to work or not, how, how our, the English staff would relate to, to the European staff, how their, what their English skills would be like. So we took a bit of a gamble and just decided that we would employ 20. So 20 out of 300 would be a starting post just to see how it progressed. And 20 became 40 because they all wanted to bring a friend over because they enjoyed it so much. This year we will we'll look to between 70 and 80 again out of 300. So a good proportion of the staff but again we've got enough positions for everybody local who wants to come and join us. Good to see you again. You All as right. well. Bye. Bye. See you later. Let's pop the right leg. Meanwhile back at the auditions in the American bar. The standard's been quite good. I don't think I've got together the full team yet but we've still got another day of auditioning so I'm confident that we'll get what we want in the end. The Professor Bubble Show is going to be totally different this year. It's going to have live interaction with the audience, whereby in the past it's all been done in studio, so it's all on tape. Um, 
And I'm adding another character into the Professor Bubble show. And I won't say any more. <laughs> Number nine, twelve, eight, three, and four. Unfortunately, we don't need you as a dancer, but if you want to stay and sing, then you can. After the break, they're all of a flutter over plans for the new bird show. And Gabor gets to grips with promotion, but he still has to clean the deep fat fryer. Well, you want them short, don't you? Yeah. You want them just to be. Do you, do you want the pleat left in there? Back at home in the northeast, Haley Richardson, who's in charge of entertainment at Flamingo Land for the new season, has got her mum Carol and a friend making the costumes for the Professor Bubbles children's show. What are you wearing on your legs for this? Just fishnets. The heels, and we've got the glasses on. You know the little. Oh yeah. Ah! Sorry. <laughs> that looks alright there, but once I if I take them anymore, well, they're not going to be able to dance, are they? Well, that's why I've left them big. Right. Does it look alright? Looks good. Yeah. Hard to tell whether you're I, I don't know about the slippers. <laughs> yeah, the slippers. I don't know about the slippers. <laughs> <laughs> There's a costume to make for Haley's new character in the show, Professor Troubles. He's Professor Bubbles' multicoloured nephew. So the nephew's going to be exactly the same as that, but without the wrinkles and the grey yeah. hair. But you need to make a cap. If we've got enough material out of that, just go around his head and then the peak here. It's going to take a tiny bit of material for that one. Then. Quite a big head. It's just like foam, you know, like uh -huh. a spongy. It smells. Does <laughs> I bet it gets hot in there, though, don't I? I bet it do. Victoria Gibb, who's married to Flamingo Land's boss, Gordon Gibb, is a theme designer and she played a big part in the redesign of their home. The last time you were here was probably about two years ago when we'd just moved in and um, we had great plans for what we were going to do with the house. To be honest, there's not much of the original house left inside. We've kind of stripped it down and rebuilt it. This is the kitchen. It's meant to look old. It's a 300-year-old lodge we're living in, so I didn't want anything to look too modern or too sort of shiny and sparkly. Um, this room was supposed to be Gordon's gym. So we've got a hot tub put in just outside the French windows. And I came home one day and there was wonderful light in the room. Uh, it's west-facing and I just loved it. So unfortunately he lost it and I gained it. But we are going to build him a gym next year in the outhouses. The couple are expecting the arrival of their first baby any day now. This is the nursery. Um, the baby won't be in here at first anyway for the first three months, hopefully. He'll be sleeping in this with us in the bedroom. Well, that's Gordon permitting. We have to make sure that Gordon's happy with that too. Um, I'm a little bit superstitious, so I haven't unpacked everything that we've, we've bought him. There's lots of things that are still wrapped up because even though they've told me I'm having a boy, it just might not be a boy. And then I can whip these back to the shop and change them for the pink version when we, uh, when we do find out what it is. Um, I've been very lucky. He's a very spoilt baby already. These are from my godson, Bede, who's just a year old. So these are all his clothes, so we've got plenty of everything. It's very strange to think of all these clothes actually fitting a little human being, but I guess that's what's going to happen really soon. Um, it's quite terrifying, really. I don't intend to take much time off work, but I'm very lucky because not only do I work in an environment where I'm surrounded by people who help, uh, not least of all my mother-in-law lives um, on site and my sister-in-law also works, Melanie works there too, but um, there's any number of other people who will help me. But also um, I've got a great big office where I can have like part of a nursery and I'm my own boss, which means that I can do my work around my baby. I don't intend to let him suffer in any way, but by the same token, I don't think it'll do him any harm being with me at the office rather than being with me at home. But that might all change. I mean, you know, it might take one look at him and decide that I never want to set foot in an office for the next six months and I just want to lie down and stare at my newborn baby. You know, I, I don't know how I'm going to be. At the moment, the intention is to go straight back to work. Besides, they need me.
bank at Flamingoland, Hungarian economics graduate Gabor is taking his new responsibilities as a catering supervisor very seriously. We are in a minute in a Americanos. It sells fish and chips, sausages, burger, hot dogs, uh, wraps, uh, and it's open in the night time during the season because next to us the American bar and the people's coming out from American bar and everybody hungry so wants fish and chips, uh, especially at 12 o'clock. You can see already the difference between the two, so... Have we got the hot dog for Saturday night, Gabor? Yeah. Last year, I was supervisor in a Jolly Sailor restaurant, yeah? I was selling, like, one side in a kiosk, he's selling uh, fish and chips and uh, sausages, like, in here. This year, I've got one more like bigger than this one, a uh, fish and chip shop. It's called Frankie's Fish. So that's what I will do in this season, probably. That's the plan and we'll see. That's the trick. If you put some D2 on there, it's like a glue and it's look bad. You got the D2, mate. A lot more responsibility because just the Jolly Sailor is the is a busiest unit in a park and uh, that is sell very well as well, Frankie's as well, so it take loads of money and uh, obviously bigger responsibility as well, so we'll see. Gabor isn't the only one with a heavier workload this year. There are big plans to upgrade Flamingo Land's bird show. Uh, my name's Peter Bloom and I run the animal and bird shows at Flamingo Land and I have done so for the last uh, 20, 22 years. We're going to get um, our African pie crow out. He's going to show you what we've been working on. This is uh, so far two, and three, two to three weeks work. He's going to come out, he's going to pick a cloth up from the floor, put it in the bin and go back for his tip bit and then back into his box. So we've got a nice little uh, triangle of, of work. It's how we do these things and uh, Sam will run him through. Okay. I'm going to quite close first so we'll make it quite easy for us. Okay Jess. Good, hey? Good girl. Good girl. The last um, sort of seven or eight years have been strictly parrots, the cores, uh, and you can hear them all in the background. Um, but this year they've decided to upgrade the show into uh, a mixed show and we have a new stadium in construction and uh, we've brought in a lot of new birds, different varieties, so we can make the show more interesting, more diverse and more educational. Now the trick is here getting one out at a time because they all want to come and play. Okay. When they're all out, <laughs> when they're all flying around and they're hungry, it's like being attacked by a herd of butterflies. You know. They're all over the place. The show's going to be different simply because of the variety of birds that we're going to have performing during the, uh, the display. We keep some of the parrots, um, but we have seremas, we have crows, we have birds of prey, owls, uh, harris hawks, we've got a vulture. And all of these things we're going to bring out and try and explain what they are, why they're doing particular things in the show. I'm trying to relate that to, you know, sort of natural wild behaviour. Up in the northeast, Haley is preparing to head to Yorkshire to start rehearsals for the Professor Bubble Show. Today I'm leaving my home in Newcastle. It's a very sad day, um, but excited at the same time. It's going to be good, but as you can see, the room's a bit jam-packed today because. Um, well, it has been all, all Christmas, so I've been at home over the Christmas, so... And then when I move back home, I've got to put everything in this little room. So I'm happy to get everything out again. Splashed out on Saturday on a new mini convertible, and it's so lovely. Brand new, drove it out the showroom on Saturday. But it's cream, which isn't ideal for Flamingo Land. Convertible, which isn't ideal for Flamingo Land, but hopefully will be in the summer. But it's so lovely. 
Yeah. Sure, that's everything. Well, I'll be back soon anyway, so. And you'll be coming, won't you? Yes, we'll be going soon. Just drive carefully. I will. Oh, love you. Love Remember you. the speed limits. I will. Drive carefully, okay? I will. Sure. Love you. Love you too. See you soon. Bring us when you get there. I'll give you a ring the boat now and see how you're getting on. Yes. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye. And we'll be meeting Hayley again next time. Here's our competition again.